Welcome to the Binge Breakers Podcast. I'm Jacqueline. I am here to teach you how I overcame bulimia and my binge eating disorder and how you can too. Through simple steps of mind management, repairing your relationship with yourself, understanding your habits, and intuitive eating. Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> it's weird because I'm, I'm filming these again. I have a uh, I feel like I should update you guys. And the last episode was more serious. It was like, do you want the red pill? Do you want the blue pill? And I love the intensity of that podcast, but I'm not always so serious. So today I'll give you a quick little update. Those of you guys that aren't really following me on Instagram, you probably don't know. I rolled my ankle. Very sad. I rolled it uh, last Thursday and I am feeling better. I'm doing okay, of course, but I didn't think it was that bad. And then my boyfriend, when he came home, was like, oh, show me your ankle. Is that swollen? I was like, oh, no, it's not swollen. And I took off my sock and it was like an Easter egg. So <laughs> that, that happened, but I am re-walking. I'm able to walk and stuff like that. It's just hard and it's crazy, but hopefully I'll get back at it. I'm working really hard on rehabilitating it and making my ankle stronger than ever so that hopefully I don't roll it again because you're more likely to. So that happened. And Otherwise, I have been really enjoying coaching clients and helping people recovery. New members are in the course. It's exciting. I, I had, had no idea that this would be some of the most rewarding work of my life. And I look forward to talking to my clients. I'm always enjoyable. It's an enjoyable time. And the thing that I don't think people understand is that I learn so much from talking to my clients and my course members than Um, they could ever learn from me. Each time I talk to someone, I learn more. And each time I coach with someone, I learn more from them than than they learn from me. It's like, oh, yeah, it's this problem. How do we deal with it? And sometimes, you know, I don't know all the answers, but we go through things. And I think the magic of coaching is kind of getting out of your head and us working together to figure out, okay, what things you need to do to not focus on this anymore? How do you redirect your brain? What can we work on? What next steps can you take? And having that extra support, having that push, it's, I'm so grateful I get to do that in my own life and help people. I'm so grateful I have a coach helping me. Clients though, they teach me a lot. And a lot of the things I bring up now are problems that I saw myself and I see in my current clients. And it's interesting coaching people on an issue that you used to have yourself and being past that point. It's cool because you know how you get past it and you know how you can help other people get past it. So here's the concept I want to talk about today. And it's called why you obsess over food. So I have this really cool client. She is, um, she's a mother. She has a high paced career. She is, um, she's going through pregnancy right now. So a lot of things going on in her life, but she puts a lot of value on food as do we all. And she tends to have trouble with, um, overeating or wanting to eat food to go numb or wanting to eat food just for something fun to do. Right. And we all struggle with that. We can all relate to that. And so after, after a good few weeks of not binging and purging, she ended up binging and purging and we talked about it. And she basically had the whole house to herself that day, which is not usual for her. And a lot of her schedule is not her own. And she just had the thought of, let me go look and see what's in the fridge. And let me go explore what's in the fridge. And we decided after this that like, whenever you say, I'm curious about what's in the fridge, let's explore what this bread tastes like. That is code for binge. That doesn't mean you're going to explore. It's not some adventure that's going inside the fridge. Whenever you say, let's explore, let's do this. It's because it's a code word for binging, basically. So that's something we said right away. But uh, she also, uh, we talked about, okay, like, why did you why did you feel the need to go explore food? And why is food the only thing that you feel you can do to relax and take a break? And this wasn't all of it. This is kind of an overarching concept of our session and our talk. And I asked her, which is something I teach in my course too, about the fact that why, why is food so enjoyable to you? Like, why, why is it so easy to go numb with food? And she was a little bit baffled by the answer um, or didn't know exactly what to say. And I said, why can't you feel the same way you feel about food as you would about a shower? Like, why can't you feel that way about a shower? And she's like, she, we we both kind of laughed about it, but here's why that's not possible for her right now. It's because of her thinking. So 
here are some of the things she thinks about food. And I used to think about food. And a lot of my other clients think about food. I was so bad singling out one client because I know that they listen and I know they know who they are. <laughs> but most of the time, concepts one client brings up, many of them are also struggling with. And I struggle with them too. So she's not the only one. But um, basically, the things she thinks about food are it's a thing to explore. That's a thought she has about food. It's a way to escape. Food is a way to escape. Food is something that I get to do when I'm bored. It's an activity. Food is entertaining. And um, food, these are the top three most interesting thoughts I thought. Um, food is an excusable break. It's an excusable way to take a break and a way to silence my brain when it's food. I can't just lie down and rest because then my brain will still keep on going. But with food, it's okay and it's excusable and it is a distraction, a good enough distraction. Um, food is a way I can have control over my time, over what I enjoy, anything, over what I eat. Um, binging and purging is a control method, right? Um, I can shut down my mind when I eat food. And that is a really interesting statement because you can shut down your mind doing other things. It just takes practice of when your mind spins the record of whatever dramatic things it says to you, you say, oh, we're not thinking that anymore. No, we're not doing that anymore. Another client told me the thought of, hey, we don't do that anymore. That is a really powerful statement for her. So I wanted to say that to you guys now. Um, but I wanna be really careful about this all of the things she thinks about food, she could easily think about the shower, <laughs> which sounds so silly, but she could. So I always talk about in my course how I want eating food to be as pleasurable as taking a shower to you. I don't want it to, I want it to be enjoyable. I want it to be nice. I want it to be pleasant, but I don't want it to consume your entire day. Um, because let's think about it. You guys don't ever daydream about taking a shower unless you're really dirty even playing in the field or something for a while but we have a very healthy relationship with showering generally we look forward to showering showering's a nice event it makes us feel good it revitalizes us it cleans us and then once we take the shower we're done with the shower we don't think about it until the next time we need a shower but she could think you could think things about the shower like the shower is my way to escape it's a thing to explore. Ooh, what type of soap could I use in the shower today? You could, it's something to do when you're bored. You have nothing to do. Oh, I could take a shower. Um, you could, it's an excusable break. You could think I could take a break and the only way I can take a break without my brain making me feel guilty, I could take a shower. If we need to get clean. It's important to stay clean. I could take a shower. Um, food is a really easy way to take that, to back, back that control and be like, no, it's my time. I get to do what I want. I can eat this food. So exciting. You could think those things about the shower. <laughs> you could think, ooh, you know, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to rebel. I'm going to do what I want. I can take a shower anytime I want. Um, and it, no one's going to take me out of the shower. I get to do anything I want in here. That is something you could think about the shower. And you could think a shower is entertaining. Um, you could also do the key concept that food is providing for her here. I can shut down my mind when I eat food. You could also shut down your mind when you take a shower. Now, I am not suggesting that you try to put all your energy that you put on food and then put it into the shower. I really want you guys to all have a healthy relationship with showering. Um, however, the point of this example is for you to realize that it's not the food that is so euphoric. And of course, yeah, if you eat sugar, your blood sugar is gonna spike, dopamine is gonna spike. Like there are certain chem chemical factors with food that there aren't with showering, <laughs> but the thoughts that you have surrounding food are making it much, much worse than it needs to be. If you could clean up your thinking around food, it could help you out so much. And that's what I do. I practice for a long time instead of thinking, oh, the food is so good. I practice all the time thinking food is just food. The food is just food. It doesn't offer me that much entertainment. Food is not something I want to get entertainment from anymore. I can shut off my brain without food. And do I need to shut off my brain? Can I just leave my brain running? Or better yet, instead of trying to shut off your damn brain, maybe I could clean up the thinking that is in my brain instead. Instead of trying to just pull the unplug on my life and my brain, I could instead try to redirect my brain and practice thinking better thoughts so I don't feel the need to shut down my brain. 
And when I first started trying to not overeat and not binge, um, it was first the binging, but I really got more into this. The um, I was still overeating after binging and I didn't realize that that was emotional eating for a little while. I thought I was just like eating normally, but I realized, oh, I'm like, when I would try to stop overeating, I'd have a really emotional response to it. And part of it was from my thinking. And so when I was first trying to recover and when I was trying to eat normally, I would tell myself things like, um, at the very least, you're, you're choosing to eat this. So I'd take back that control and like out of uh, body experience. And I'd be like, bring it back to the fact that nothing's controlling me. I'm eating this food. It's not a crazy, um, adrenaline rush binge. It's just me making a decision. I would tell myself over and over and over again that this is just food. This is just food. It's fuel. It's not some crazy enjoyable experience. It's not something that's going to bring me to another level. It's not like I'm eating mushrooms. It is just food. That's what I tell myself all the time. And that thought really did stick. Um, and then I would also tell myself food isn't my main source of joy and food isn't my main source of purpose. I have other things that are more important to me than food. And now I say to myself a lot of time when my mind tries to dramatize food or my mind wants to go to that default of worrying about food if it doesn't have anything else to do. Um, and I just say, no, this is a waste of my time. Food, thinking about food outside of when I'm hungry, outside of when I'm trying to prep meals or outside of grocery shopping is a waste of my goddamn time it's a waste of my time. So I think that, but that was an evolutionary process. I first try to just convince myself it is not entertainment. It is not um, something that I use for control. It is not a way to go numb. It's not a way to shut down my mind. I don't need to shut down my mind. And even if I shut down my mind, I can do it in other ways. I could change everything about that, but it is just food. It's just a potato. It's just a piece of corn. It's just food. Um, and then also something you could do, something to think about at the very least, you might say like, it's not just my thoughts about it. Binging is a euphoric experience. Binging is the most, um, the best way to go numb. But here's something I learned a while ago that really, really made food a lot less pleasurable for me. Um, and it was the concept of, and while you're binging or while you're overeating, why don't you try to stay present for it? For it? Instead of letting yourself get swept away with a binge, Recognize that you're first choosing it, you're doing it. It's not because something is controlling you. Some um, monster has come out of the woodworks. You're binging, it's okay. It doesn't make you less of a person. It doesn't mean that you have to beat yourself up for it. It just means that you're in control. And then also try to stay present for it. Don't try to go numb for it. Try to actually taste the food that you're binging on. And imagine if you had to binge and you had to write down after every single bite that you took, how you felt, <laughs> what the food tasted like, if you still wanted to keep on going, and why or why not. That is a surefire way to suck the joy out of that experience because you have to stay present to do that. If you have to pause after each bite and write it out, you're not gonna binge for very long. And that's the, it's just like making a simple switch of being present during binging. Just all of this, all this long rant is to tell you that food isn't the numbing agent that you think it is. It's just what you built up in your head. The food can be numbing because of the way you think of it. The food, but food can just as easily be just food. And the way that you redirect those things is constantly reminding yourself, constantly remembering when your brain is going down this drama loop, recognizing those thoughts, being onto your brain about it, being like, you know what, I know my brain tends to think these things, writing out what even you think it might be that they think. We all have our own individual track and you're the best person at recognizing those things. And that starts with journaling, being aware, looking for these types of thoughts. But once you've gotten onto your brain about what it traditionally tells you, all the crap that it feeds you, then it's time to, whenever those thoughts come up, be ready for them and have something else to say to them and have something else to redirect your brain to. My brain feeds me crap all the time, but I don't indulge in it. I don't buy from it. I don't sell, I don't buy the sneak out oil that it's selling me. I know what it's doing. I know that it's sneaky. And I just say, no, we're not doing this right now. Like, no brain, remember we're here. We're doing this. That's, this is how we think. Yeah, no, catch up to us. Come on, brain, come on. We're doing this you're doing this, we need you to come with us. And even if you don't come with us, you can be here, but I'm here. 
and I'm not listening to your bullshit. So basically that is what we did with this client and that's what she's working really hard on. And that's what helped me. And that's what helps a lot of people is neutralizing basically your thoughts around food. Stop building it up to be this euphoric out of body experience. It can be, but it's because of your thinking, not just because of the chemical reactions in your body. Thinking about something, it makes it much more pleasurable or much worse, depending on how you think about it. So um, I hope this made sense. I hope this helped you guys. If you want to work one-on-one -on -one with these concepts, of course, you can recover on your own. I'm not going to sit here and suggest that my coaching is the only thing that will help you recover, but I guarantee you coaching is a great, great way to see quicker results. Coaching helps you debunk all the crap in your brain. It gives you committed times to go over all the things floating around in there. It pushes you to take action. It pushes you to look at what's going on and it pushes you to recover, especially when you don't feel like recovering yourself. Um, I highly suggest that you seek help in whatever capacity you can. Um, I know it's hard. I know you really have to try to do that. And I know that it's painful. If you're thinking about reaching out for help, whether to me or to someone else, I highly recommend that you maybe go over the reasons why you want to do this anyway, because God, I know it's hard. I know it's hard to reach out to someone and share a secret that you're not even comfortable talking about with yourself, but I promise you living a life recovered, recovered free from bulimia, it's much better. It's, it isn't, it's not even that it's so perfect. It's just that you're so much better at handling things. I would not go back for a million dollars and I, I promise you you wouldn't go back either. So come up with the compelling reasons why you wanna go through talking with someone, getting help, and that will make it much easier to actually reach out for help. All right, I'll talk to you guys in the next episode next week. Bye. Hey, if you like this episode, you have to come check out the Binge Breakers Recovery Course. If you're trying to recover from bulimia and you're sick of doing it alone, and you feel like you've tried a lot of traditional therapies and it's not working with you, come join the course. Go to bingebreakers.com slash recovery dash course.